Sunday's worship time. I'm Lloyd Walker, one of the lay preachers here at St Luke's Heighton, and I'll be leading our time together today and next week. Paul, our ordained minister here at St Luke's, is around, but he's having a break, as we all need. I'm here again in our worship space, but I suspect like many of you in Victoria, I'm a bit dismayed that we aren't, haven't yet been able to return here as we hoped we would. Indeed, 2020 continues to be a challenge and a tester. Today, I want to look at a very well-known passage, but differently. Our theme today is trust in the midst of a storm. Let's pray. Give thanks to the Lord and pray to God. Tell the nations what God has done. Sing to God. Yes, sing praises to God. Tell about all the wonderful things God has done. Be glad that you are God's. Let those who ask the Lord for help be happy. Depend on God. Rely on God's strength. And always go to God for help. Help us, O oh God, in this time of worship and beyond. We are tired and anxious, with minds and lives full of uncertainty. Here in Victoria, we are back to our homes, trying to care and support each other, but not spread the dangerous virus. We become angry when we hear of some who don't seem to be helping, and we are quick to judge, even condemn. At times we cry out, can't we just go back to the way we were? forgetting how much our communities and world was dividing, fragmenting and burning up. The storm was brewing, but we pretended it wouldn't be that bad. Maybe it might just blow over. God, we are sorry for getting our own, going our own way and focusing on what seemed right to us, not what you called us to, to justice, kindness and humility before you. Now our world is in the midst of a terrible storm. Help us hear your voice in the noise, the howling, the tumult, and the worries of our minds. Help us to turn again to you as you say, I am here. Do not be afraid. Reassure us with your gift of grace, your assurance that when we turn away from our sin toward you, your hand is outstretched to release us from the bonds of sin. Hear our prayer and gather us into your safety. Today's gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33, but it's so well known, I wanted to do something different. So I want you to listen to this differently. Let's imagine it's the morning after a big storm swept across Lake Genesaret, early in the first century, during the time of Jesus. Perhaps these were some of the stories being told that morning. Just as I say, I went out from the shore over near Bethsaida in the boat and pretty soon got themselves into rough water. Sea breeze, you know, except this time it was fierce. We weren't far from the shore, so came in. Didn't want to be caught out on the abyss. But Philip's boat was in the midst of it all, where it was suddenly dark. They saw him like a ghost. He came closer and closer and then got into the boat. And I said it just went calm. And there they were, just metres from the shore here. Our boat also had it rough. It's hard to talk about. Monstrous it was. I've never seen such ferocity. You could hardly see yourself. And as night drew in, we thought we were gone. Vomit everywhere. Never happened to me before. Then we saw him like a ghost, at first just a faint glow, then closer, closer, and up he got into the boat. There wasn't time to explain. He got the slop bucket and started trying to wash up the muck. He washed our feet. He even threw a bucket full right in my face. I must have looked a slobbering mess. Then it happened. A big one it was, a real big one crashed right over us, it did. I thought we were going to roll. I grabbed the side and hung on for all my might. Baptised we were, under the water. But it was just the immensity of the wave. 
Thank God we were still right way up. I looked around. He'd gone. He's gone, I thought. He's gone. I never did see him again. When we got to shore, we were distraught. The others rushed over to us. They were shouting. Peter and his crew were celebrating. We didn't know what to think. Was it a dream? I think I'm still shaking. Last night I thought we were destined for the abyss, the watery depths. It just started crashing around us. You could see the fear in everyone's eyes, men and women, fishermen and townsfolk. And in the midst of this, someone screamed, a ghost. He just walked calmly through the storm toward the boat and called out, take courage, it's me, don't be afraid. Well, Peter and a couple of the others went towards the edge of the boat and hailed him. And Jesus called Peter to come, and so he did. He climbed out of the boat and went towards Jesus. It was like he was able to walk on water. It was amazing. But then the rain and the noise roared, and Peter hesitated and started to sink. He yelled to Jesus, who just reached out. The storm didn't seem to bother him, and took Peter's hand. Within moments, they were both climbing into the boat, and the storm was gone. The lapping of the water and gentle flap of the sail was such a contrast. And we all fell out on our face and worshipped the one who we'd been following all this time, because now we knew this was God among us. As our readers shared a different way of telling the iconic story on Lake Galilee from 2,000 years ago, did you hear it afresh? In these challenging times, we should remember that God's Spirit is as close as our breath, and we should never stop reading the Bible, praying, or singing songs of praise. Because just like the disciples huddled in that boat so long ago, Jesus is waiting to call to us and say, Do not be afraid. I am here. Now, Paul said last week he wasn't going to explain the details of a feeding of 5,000 men. I'm not going to try and explain today how there was a, the, the Messiah walked on the water. But I will just point out, as Paul did, that Matthew's Gospel here continues the tendency to look back at the Old Testament, draw passages out of Genesis and Exodus to use images everybody would have understood. Jesus up on a mountain, like Moses was on a mountain, talking to God. Jesus walking across the water or having an experience of water, just like Moses parted the Red Sea and Joshua the Jordan with God's 
divine power. So this is Jesus in power out on the lake. The other thing to remember, of course, is the sea was something feared by a lot of the people in that time. So they didn't really want to be out there. And once it got choppy and dangerous, they feared for their lives. That's where the term abyss comes from. They were frightened. This would be their end. But if you look in the Bible from Genesis all the way through, you'll see that God was always in charge of the seas, always calming their ferocity and transforming them to places of tranquility. Here, Jesus is doing the same. In the midst of this storm, on this very deep sea of Galilee, Jesus' followers are frightened and struggling to keep their boat afloat. Now, there are other stories in Matthew and Luke and Mark. Matthew's is in chapter 8 before this one, where Jesus in a boat calms a storm. But in this case, the boat has got the disciples, but Jesus has come to them across the stormy seas. Many believe that in the period that this was written, around 70 CE, in the first century, the church, represented by the boat, was struggling in the midst of a lot of ferment and trouble going on in their community. They were under threat, just like sailors under threat of a bad storm. So, as I said, Jesus was outside the boat, on the stormy seas. Although it was challenging in the boat, and they weren't sinking, it seemed a small enclave of assurance in what was otherwise a chaotic world. And I'm sure in these challenging times we feel a bit that way too. But God, in the form of Jesus, is not confined in the boat. God is out there. So we should be reminded that God is never confined to our churches, our small groups, or our thinking of this is what God will do. God is out dealing and being part of the world. And we will find that God is out there dealing and supporting the frightened victims of COVID-19, the exhausted health, work, health workers and the stressed leaders, even though we can't be there. Peter speaks for those of us who can be sceptical of God at times. Perhaps if I put it this way, if his words were, God, if it's you out there, command me to come to you in this chaos. Now, I don't know what Peter was thinking exactly at that time, but when I've thought those words and asked God, I'm actually hoping that God will either not answer, in which case he clearly wasn't calling me out from that um, chaotic world, or I'm hoping that the answer that comes back from God will be something along the lines of, Oh, no, that's okay. You just stay there. Um, I've got it under control. Um, throw out some life preservers or just do something helpful like that. But you stay there. In some tragic parts of the world, that's meant maybe just send some money and forget about it. That's not what happens here for Peter. Peter hears the words of Jesus out in the world say, Come. Do we trust Jesus enough? that when we hear that come, we will get out of the boat and go. In the current circumstances of COVID-19 restrictions in Victoria, perhaps it is to call that person we know is alone, who was a bit rude the last time we met, and give them a phone call. Or maybe put on our mask and go out and check with our neighbour across the back fence, the one that was really grumpy when we were cutting down the tree and we really haven't talked to them since, and just check in on them and say, would you like me to pick up some milk or some bread when I'm down at the shops? And if we're finding that a real stressful thing to do or we're a bit frightened, feel like maybe we're out of our depth, that's when we can turn to God and call out, just as Peter did, Lord, save me, Lord, help me. And Jesus will be there to scoop us up by the one, as the one who's calmed the waves. There is a key difference, though, in this story compared to the others about Jesus and the water. When he's back in the boat, Jesus says to Peter, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Peter was affirmed for his faith. It was small but growing. 
But Peter and we are challenged to stop doubting and trust. This week, look for God out there in the midst of troubling times, human tragedy, world chaos. It's true the media and powerful people won't see it. But if you're looking, you'll see God at work. And then ask, God, if that is you at work, command me what I should do in these storms. And then respond. Gracious God, trusting in your providence and presence, we bring our prayer for an end to this pandemic. We pray for your strengthening in all those committed to offering costly leadership during the crisis. We pray for all who are ill. We pray for those anxious about getting ill and we pray for those full of grief as we remember those who have died. And God, we promise that we will work together to share the burdens of our community now faces to end the spread supporting those worried how they will pay their bills or even buy food without work. Reassuring one another by sharing the spark of your love through random acts of kindness. And loving, as you did, Jesus, unconditionally. Aware of our fragility, we pray for your grace to sustain us as we do what we can to end this pandemic. Your compassionate, peaceful and creative response to our many crises is our model. As we read your good news and seek to live in Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, our Saviour for all times, hear our prayer. Amen. Hair mer vor her ginesis, sur pieriti anunco, ye geste arcaitunco, ye ritin gamco, vor des her ginis ye her gri, zhat mer hana bazort, dur me zaisor, tor me zbardis mer. Vor bes yev meek tohunk merots barda banat, yev midan yeriz mez i portutyun, ayl pergia i çaren, zikoye arkayutyun yev zorutyun, yev park havidyanız. Amen. This day and week, as you venture into turbulent and uncertain waters, know that Jesus is not very far away. May you be reminded in the midst of sad and disturbing news that we live in a time of hope established by Jesus' gift those many years ago. And when you're tempted to pull up the blankets, close the door and hide away from the challenge of living in this world, hear joy, Jesus calling to you saying, come, put on your face mask or pick up the phone and join him being a loving friend to our neighbours and fellow travellers. Be reassured through these words of God from Isaiah chapter 43. Don't be afraid. I've redeemed you. Called your name. You're mine. When you're in over your head, I'll be there with you. When you're in rough waters, you will not go down. When you're between a rock and a hard place, it won't be a dead end. Because I'm God, your personal God, the one who saves. And now may the untiring grace of Christ Jesus, the embracing love of God, and the inspiring companionship of the Spirit be with you now and always.